of rejects. Woo! It's like a real team out there. Yo, what the hell is that? It's a grenade I tied to a Russian tank shell. Why not just the grenade? A grenade blows up like two people. How many people does this blow up? I don't know. I invented it this morning. What? Eat peace, mother. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Wes Grant. You're watching Sub Urban Nerd. This channel where I get my nerd views on today's nerd news. I also do these uh, show reviews. I haven't done one in a while, so you know, forgive me, forgive me. But today we're going to be reviewing the show on HBO Max called Peacemaker, starring John Cena. Yeah, yeah, you know, the wrestler or whatever. So if you guys have never seen any of the DC movies, the last one you really should have watched if you're going to watch this series is Suicide Squad 2. Now, this one, some people may look at it and be like, you know, from the trailers and be like, yo, this is this like a broke man's Suicide Squad? Yes and no. So, John Cena, if you didn't see the end of the movie, he survives. And Amanda Waller somehow, you know, he thinks he gets away and he gets dragged back into it to be on this like kind of task force uh, where if you guys didn't see the last in, in the last Suicide Squad movie she gets knocked out by her crew you know uh, the main person being Flo Prawley which if you guys didn't know that's actually her cousin in the comics now the black lady that hits her with the oh yes that's her cousin um, and the other people the guy with the beard and these other people that were working and you know making those bets on the Suicide Squad they some of them get dragged into working on this task force uh, the main person that's in charge the boss is uh, Clemson and then you've got Emilia which she's badass kick ass in the show and Foxy so I didn't her body's slamming um, you've got Amanda Waller's daughter Leota and uh, the guy that John Cena keeps messing with uh, the beard man or whatever his name is John Economist which is a weird name so John Cena, of course, re retains the role of being the peacemaker. But I'm going to just go through the three episodes, kind of what I liked about it. Now, the first episode pretty much is focusing on him getting out. Like, he gets out of the hospital. And uh, there's, a, there's a good dialogue funny between him and the guy that's mopping on um, whether he's a superhero or not. And the guy's never heard of him. And he was like, oh, wait, no, you're the racist superhero that only beats up the minorities. He was like, no, 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 I equally beat up all races. I'm like, no, 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 you mostly, you know, beat up uh, minorities. Well, he was like, no, I will make it my my goal to beat up others than minorities, more white people. I'm going to beat up more white people. And that's, that was a funny uh, kind of dialogue going between them. He gets out, he gets home, he has to break into his uh, house or whatever. And uh, that's when he finds out that everybody else knows he's out and he gets dragged into the team. I can't remember what the name of the task force team is, but their main goal is to take out these things called butterflies, right? They don't let John Cena know. You find out later in episode three what butterflies are, but they kind of they kind of reference it when he walks into his dad's house, and um, who who turns out to be a crazy character in the DC uh, comics as well. Uh, I believe his name is uh, the White Dragon, but I'll get back to that in a little bit later. So. He goes to his, you know, uh, after he gets dragged in, they say, okay, yeah, you're part of the team. He goes back to his father's house, and you find out that there is an interdimensional uh, closet that has all these different helmets, and John Cena's stupid-looking helmet isn't just a stupid-looking helmet. It actually has different abilities, whether it's a sonic, uh, a sonic pulse burst, or whether it's x-ray, or it's like, like a laser beam. Like, it has, a, there's different helmets for different uses, which is crazy. There's one that lets him breathe underwater, which is, it's crazy. But, um, the, the, the dynamics between a father and John Cena's character, Peacemaker, or Chris, you find it's not as simple and it's dynamic. And, and the one thing that I like is you saw John Cena had some range, right? When you saw him in Suicide Squad 2, or The Suicide Squad, you saw when he had to fight Rick that it was really pulling on him because he pulled the gun on him was like, yo, don't make me do this. Because I was telling someone that, imagine, he, Amanda Water tells secretly he has to do this. 
he has that bomb in the back of his head. So he, you could see that he did not want to do this, but he had to follow. But except I think a lot of it was that he followed it because he's, he's, uh, he was basically trained by his father to be that rule person, to follow these rules, you know, by them. And, and so uh, a large part of him did that because of that. And he didn't want to, but he had to follow the rules. I don't even think the the bomb was a major thing to him. I think it's just the fact that he was told as a soldier to do what he had to do, and he said it. He's willing to kill any man, woman, and child in order to preserve peace, and that's what he thought he was doing. Um, and that's why Rick, when he was you know about to die, he said, "Peacemaker, what a joke." And you could see that see that John Cena is really dealing with that. It really took a toll on him, what he had to do to Rick in order to get back, and. This 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 show, it's 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 um James Gunn. He's really great at doing. I'm I'm not gonna say as great as like Taika Waititi because somehow he he it's amazing how he can go from dramatic to comedic. But in, in the Suicide Squad, James Gunn kind of can do that as well. And and in this show, he does that. Like there's moments where you see the heart of John Cena and he's dealing with and, and he seems like a goofball, but that's because. He wasn't raised like a regular person. He was raised by his father. I'm pretty sure his dad homeschooled him, and that's all he knows. So all these things like butt babies and 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 the butt and the starfish being named for a butthole, like all those silly things, that's because his father probably imprinted it and said these things. But um, you you see early on that he has to do this, and he's dealing with them, and and the way the first episode ends, where he ends up sleeping with a butterfly. And it's crazy because, you know, I thought, I thought the way they were showing it was that the lady was a man. Like, that's the way they were, because they kept hiding. So it was kind of like a twist where they made you think it was one thing, but it turned out to be another thing. And that's where it was kind of crazy because the whole time they kept showing her from blocking the waist down. I'm like, is, 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 this a, is this a dude that he ended up sleeping by mistake? And you no, know, it was a butterfly. And the way he exploded her with the helmet, amazing. Um... The second episode, he starts out, he has to actually run, he's going through the building, and there's a lot of comedic moments. Uh, that's where you get to see the other people, kind of the side characters kind of shine, with Leota, her comedy, as far as with the, her relationship, and then the way she talks to Emilia. And the whole dialogue between them is funny, because she's talking about her dog, and the friends, and the girlfriend, and all this, and she was like, yeah, tell, take, tell them to go home. And, but the real fun is when, uh, when um, John Cena goes into the house, of a couple or the apartment of a couple and like you know there's flirting going on between him and the wife and a guy and the boyfriend's is like are you serious or the husband's like are you serious and um yeah and somehow he gets away uh with the help of the team the crew and uh and the dad actually gets arrested because they say they they changed all the evidence the fingerprints and everything to be that it was the dad that actually uh, did everything, which was hilarious. I, I, thought, I still think it was stupid because it's a connection. That's a clear connection to Peacemaker. So, but you know, the guy's a racist, so it's kind of comeuppance. And but you find out later that he's known as the White Dragon, which in the DC comics, the White Dragon was a racist. Not even anti. He was like an anti-hero, but he sort of ended up becoming a villain. Uh, but also hired by the Suicide Squad. It's, it's weird, but yeah, he was a he was a, um, a vigilante that pretty much targeted minorities, and that's what the White Dragon was, and that's what the father is, which is why they relate the r racism of John Cena's Peacemaker to him, even though John Cena isn't. Because there's one thing where in the beginning he was like, "I don't care," and they were talking about uh, Aquaman, and he was he was like. Yo, F Aquaman, I don't care about anything, I don't care, you could do a girl, you could do a guy, but when you start effing fishes, that's a lie. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Um, so the episode 2 ends, and then episode 3 is where you get to see all this, because you see, like in episode 2, his friend Vigilante shows up. And, and in episode 1, you saw someone, but you didn't know. So and then in episode 3, that's when it all comes together, they gotta go take out a senator, who is being protected by... Was it um, Judo Master, which is this Asian guy that's like I don't even know, like maybe four foot tall, but he kicks all their asses, and it is it's it's really hilarity that that ensues. And but um, John Cena, he's dealing with what he had to do with Ric Flair, so he can't pull the trigger on these kids. You know, his whole slogan: any man, woman, and child, he can't do it no more. 
So and then his his buddy uh, Vigilante takes over, and he's like humming a mm, 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 mm. boo. Takes out the wife. Mm, 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 mm. Takes out the, the 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 little boy. Takes out the uh, the girl. And then I don't like. I would have taken out the main alphas first, and then take out the little ones. But regardless, uh, they ended up getting caught, and he gets tortured. John Cena, boom! Every the, the squad has to come in and save them. And then that's when you find out why they're called the butterflies because when he blows off the guy's head, some alien butterfly comes out, and you realize there's an evasion happening, and you see it all on a map. And that's kind of like how it ends. Now, as far as the whole episode, like, I equate this show to sort of like, uh, Doom Patrol, it's kind of like wacky, but this one's really good because it's got that levity that James Gunn's, uh, you know, uh, Guardians of the Galaxies and Suicide Squad had, where you got the comedy, but there's definitely some heart because you see John Cena dealing with stuff, really dealing with stuff, but at the same time, he's like a stupid, oblivious guy. But it's just funny, you're seeing the growth of him, and John Cena as an actor, you're seeing the growth of, him, of, of him as an actor too. Uh, I don't know if he's going to ever get to the level of, you know, The Rock, from wrestling to acting, but I, I'm definitely going to watch the rest of the show, definitely look forward to it, and I'm going to be checking it out, so hopefully you guys check it out as well, and that's pretty much my, like, review slash rundown for Peacemaker episodes 1 through 3. I thought it was good, if you guys thought the same thing, tell me down below, remember to like the video, share the video, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your wife, tell your kids, tell all, tell everybody about this channel because I'm um, 2000, uh, 2022. I'm definitely gonna be putting more content out um, because I kind of slacked on it last year, but that was because I was trying to get the book out. I finally got the book and I was doing other things. But this year, I'm definitely gonna be putting more content on this. I've got so many boxes of things I'm gonna be unboxing, um, unboxing for you guys. So if you want to check that out, there's other videos. Um, I might start trying to do the daily news or maybe doing it weekly at the end of the week on all the nerd pop culture stuff and uh, see where it goes from there. You guys can catch me on Facebook. Um, I have a Facebook page for my book. It's called The Break Nation uh, on Instagram, Wes Grant, W-E-S-G-R-R-A-N-T. -E um, and I'm going to be trying to do Kickstarter and I'll let you guys know about any of that stuff once it gets going. But until then, like I said, subscribe, tell your friends, like, comment down below on anything that I talked about, how you feel about the show. And I'll check you guys later. So remember, I'm Wes Grant. You've been watching Suburban Nerd. And you've just been notified. Catch you guys on the next show review.